Oh my God. Oh no. Oh. Stop it. Oh my God. Knock it off. Yeah, that was a great reaction. Actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got a milestone in stand-up comedy. I was on stage, and I got 30 seconds of non-stop laughter. What an accomplishment, right, everyone? Yeah. I mean, I hadn't told my first joke yet, but still, a laugh is a laugh. <laughs> it's a big night for me, but uh, I don't want to bring the room down too much, but I just got to get this off my chest. The past year, people have been really unaccepting and shitty uh, about my transition uh, from a comedian to a blogger. <laughs> it's like, it's 2017, guys. Like, I didn't know you hate bloggers so much. Oh my God. No, my name is Robin Tran and I am transgender and that is a coincidence. <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you. There's, uh, there are people out there who think that I transitioned for one pun and that's not <laughs> why I did it. It didn't just jeopardize everything for a pun. The best thing about coming out as transgender actually is that people have been so thrown off by this that they've totally forgotten to be racist. So it's the, it's the best thing that's happened so far. My guy friends have been taking it kind of hard. They ask me these questions. I mean, when I get asked, is like, hey man, are you sure? Because like, they don't want to deal with it. Like, is this like some Andy Kaufman thing? I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> and I understand, I've had this like inner struggle my whole life. Like, it's like, oh man, I really don't like football. It's like, a lot of guys don't like football. That doesn't mean I'm a woman, right? <laughs> I, like, I cry a lot. I listen to a lot of girly pop songs. A lot of guys cry a lot. Listen to girly, but that doesn't mean I'm a woman, right? I masturbate my dick like a clit because it feels like my dick's in the way. <laughs> all, right. all right, that was a little bit harder to justify. I'm not, I'm not really sure how to reel that one back. Ooh. Um, I was talking to one of my guy friends. I've known this guy since we were kids, and he goes, uh, Hey, Robin. Hypothetically speaking, if I'm finding myself starting to get attracted to you since you started transitioning, hypothetically speaking, <laughs> does that make me gay? And I'm like, well, that's a weird hypothetical question to Facebook message me at three in the morning. You know, like, <laughs> kind of, uh, <laughs> why did you just like one of my profile pictures from June? That was weird. Like, are you going through my, what are you doing? So I looked it up because I wasn't sure, you know, but so apparently uh, most doctors would say that if you're a man and you're attracted to transgender women, that doesn't make you gay. But I think that we should take that a step further. I think that if you're a guy and you're attracted to transgender women, not only are you not gay, I think that means that you're super straight, okay? Because it's like, yo, Kevin, do you like transgender women? Kevin's like, what? Do I like transgender women? Dude, as long as it's a girl, I don't give a fuck what kind. I'll fuck any bitch, dude. Black, white, cock, pussy. I don't give a fuck, son. If she's a girl, I'm down there, dude. Like, literally down there. I'll eat a girl's pussy. I'll suck a girl's dick, dude. I don't give a fuck. She's a girl. Transgender women. Dude, that's like eating a box of cereal and getting a prize that you didn't expect, all right? No. I'm just kidding. It's not like eating a box at all, all right? All right. Yo, Kevin, you like pussy? You goddamn right I like pussy. Well, there's a porn actor named Buck Angel. He's a transgender man, and he's got a pussy. Did you eat out Buck Angel? What? That's fucking gross, dude. I ain't fucking gay, all right? I ain't gonna eat that dude's pussy because that shit's fucking gay. And I ain't gay, all right? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna be over here sucking Christina's dick, all right? I just... I do that joke because a lot of guys are just really afraid of being gay, and that creeps me out. Like, I'll get messages from guys, like, on the internet, like with wives asking me to like fuck on the down low and all that stuff, you know? And it's like, 
Now that's, my, now, now that's my worst fear. My worst fear in life now is like getting murdered by a dude who hates himself for wanting to fuck me. You know what I mean? Just because I don't know the difference between like transgender piece of shit and like transgender piece of shit. You're like. <laughs> all right, look, I don't want to be the star of Asian American beauty, all right? So. Uh... Something else I didn't expect, I started getting uh, dick pics sent to me on Instagram. Yeah, I know, I, didn't, I did not ask for these pictures. I'm surprised I get them considering I look like a giant baby that found a dress, but I, uh, I'm getting them anyway. You know, if they keep this up, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start sending mine back. That's what I'm gonna do. Show them a, show them a thing or two, literally, a thing or two. I actually have a very small penis. Thank you very much. Hold the applause. Someone just went, oh, like, we want to know which genitals you have. We don't want to know the size, all right? I used to be really ashamed of my small penis before my transition, like, oh, what about my manhood or whatever? But now that I'm transitioning, I'm glad I have a small penis, because I'm hoping that means if I get to surgery, I'm hoping it'll cost less. You know what I mean? Like, like I'll get the half off discount. You know what I mean? I'll get the literally, Sorry, everyone. I know that was a real hack dick joke. All right. <laughs> I'm in this really weird phase of my transition right now. Now, whenever someone is sexist towards me, I'm like simultaneously insulted by the misogyny, but I'm secretly glad that they acknowledge me as a woman. So I don't know what to do with these two conflicting feelings. Like someone say something really fucked up to me on the internet and in public, I have to go, oh, how could you? But inside I'm like, Oh my God, tell me more about how I'm a dumb woman. Oh my God, really? Oh my God. You don't think I'm funny because I'm a girl? Oh my God. Tell me more, really? I do that voice and it offends people. So I'm like, oh my God, you like my shoes? Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm afraid because of that voice. I'm gonna be the first transgender woman in history to like progress the trans movement forward while setting the women's movement back 50 years at the same time, you know, by just transitioning to this horrible stereotype of a woman, just, oh my God, can someone open this bottle for me? It's so hard to open. Oh my God, guys. Someone open that door for me right now or else. You can call me the C word. I'm one of the good ones. Oh, that's why I finally got you, huh? Oh, I don't know. I kind of think Caitlyn Jenner might have beat me to it. Caitlyn Jenner, let's talk about her for a, because everyone wants to know what I think about Caitlyn Jenner because we're all the same people or whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you my favorite thing about Caitlyn Jenner and it's that uh, a few months after her transitioning, watching conservatives and liberals playing hot potato over who was responsible for her because she's such a, a horrible person, you know? Just conservatives came out like, hey, that ain't no woman. That's a man in a dress and his name is Bruce and you libtards are ruining this country. And liberals were like, hey, 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 her name is not Bruce. Her name is Caitlyn, and she is a Republican, and she belongs to you. Don't fucking <laughs> pawn that bitch off on us. We don't. Belongs to you people. You know that she got into a car accident and killed somebody? Did you guys know about this? Yeah, that's right. I guess her and I, she and I both have a lot in common. Not only are we both transgender, but we're both terrible drivers. So, that's right. Vehic vehicular woman slaughter, all right? Lock her up in a women's prison, yeah. Put her in girl jail, that's what you should do. Girl jail, Jesus Christ. So people want to know about the pronouns all the time, and it's like, yes, please call me she, please call me her. People that don't want to do that, I don't want to even talk to you, but I have friends who, like, they'll mess up and they'll, like, over-apologize, you know? They'll be like, uh, he, oh my god, I mean she, oh my god, do you want me to suck your dick now? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's like, all right, look, you don't have to <laughs> calm down. Oh my god, here's five dollars, you. Please don't be mad at me. It's like, take it down a notch. But I have a few friends, and like, no offense, you know, uh, there are not a lot of them. I have like three or four friends who, like, th they're just not intelligent enough to understand 
the gender identity stuff. And, and I'll, like, I'll never correct them, but, you know, because they mean well. I was hanging out with my friend, and he's like this tough MMA, like, you know, this tough dude, you know. We're walking around, and someone yells something transphobic at me, and he goes, hey, Robin, I got this. Hey, you leave that fucking dude alone, all right? You leave, you leave this guy alone. This is my bro, all right? You leave this Y chromosome penis having buddy of mine. This is my buddy, all right? I'm a grand on curve, that's like a B plus, you know? Like he's he kind of got it halfway there. I've had to come out a lot, and um, I was the first employee in my company's history to ever come out as transgender. Don't ever be the first employee in your company to ever do anything. It was the worst experience of my life. I worked at this like conservative uh, car company, and I, I look for my human resources, and I'm trying to feel her out, see how much she knows, and I just go, Hey, have you, see, have you seen the show Transparent? And she goes, no. And I'm like, fuck, I got nothing else. I, um... <sighs> well, I guess I gotta tell her. And I just went, well, I, I, I'm transgender. And my human resources goes, oh, 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 okay. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Very good, okay. Yeah. It sounded like I gave her a present she didn't like, but she was too nice to tell me, like, no, that's very good. I like it a lot. Like, can you take it back? Or like, what would you do if you took it back? And I'm like, look, it's okay that you're a little creeped out. I just want to know what's the protocol, what I would do next. And she goes, I'll get back to you. And she ran away. And I'm like, oh, that's not a good sign that uh, the person paid to protect me just ran away from me and then... She comes back the next day. She has a stack of paperwork in her hand. She goes, okay, Robin, we have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is um, we don't have a policy for um, transgender rights here because um, they don't know what that is here. Um, but the good news is uh, we printed out the human resources for Chevron and Target, and you could just read over those. Like, that's their solution that you printed out two different companies' policies that do different things and you want me to read over, would you do that for anything else? We don't have a policy for sexual harassment, but we asked McDonald's and Halliburton, and they think <laughs> that this is what you should do. I came out to my mom uh, a couple years ago, and that was really, really hard, you know? Um, oh, I'm sorry, I mean emotionally it was hard, but I mean more logistically, because she doesn't speak any English, and I don't really speak Vietnamese, so... It was like just literally logistically difficult to come out to my mom. Like we're sitting in the car and one day I just go, Mom, in Vietnam, do they have people born boy brain girl? And she goes, what? Born boy brain girl. And she goes, okay, I don't know, sometime. I go, okay, me, that. And she goes, no. I go, yes, mom. She goes, no, you not girl, you boy. And I'm like, mom, boy, girl. And she goes, no, you boy, you lucky, because boy is good and girl is bad. And I go, why? And she goes, I don't know. This is going on for like 45 minutes. Born, boy, break. We're just yelling at each other. <laughs> and then eventually I get through to her a little bit and she goes, okay, I understand, but to me, I still see you as boy. And I go, okay, mom, you see me as boy. I sad, I kill myself. <laughs> and she goes, oh, you girl. I'm like, yes, mom. <laughs> I am girl. Man, I hope, I hope no one steals that joke. The next uh, Vietnamese transgender comedian is gonna 
come on out and steal my thunder. I had a pretty rough upbringing. I, uh, like for instance, like, you know, when I was a kid, I loved Santa Claus. Because I always saw him on TV helping Steve Urkel or whatever, you know. And so when I was a kid, my, my parents, you know, we were, they were too poor to buy us gifts, but, and they didn't celebrate Christmas. But instead of just telling me that, every year they would see me crying and they would just be like, well, maybe Santa will come next year. <laughs> Fully knowing that Santa was never coming to town. Santa was never come, but every year, maybe Santa will come next year. I'm just crying, oh my God, really? And they're like, hey, we can like use this to like emotionally manipulate our kid. So they were like, well, maybe if you got straight A's, Santa will come here next year. So I got straight A's. They didn't expect it, and I show them, here's my report card. That year, no Santa Claus. I'm like, where's Santa Claus? And the way they tried to save it was they went, well, Santa doesn't like every kid. You know, like this. <laughs> That's the way they tried to save it for me. And I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, but maybe you work hard enough. Maybe one day Santa will love you. I'm like, oh, this is like my relationship with you guys. All right, this is kind of, I get it. I get it. So during that period in elementary school, every year, our class, we, were, we would write letters to Santa Claus. The first year, it was all really nice. Dear Santa, how is Mrs. Claus doing? How is it cold in the North Pole? How are the elves? I'm sorry Tim Allen killed you in that movie. I just wanted to meet <laughs> Santa so bad. And every year he wouldn't come. Every year my letters would get increasingly angrier and angrier. <laughs> Dear Santa, I don't know where you are. I, I am waiting for you. And by the third year, I sounded like Stan writing to Eminem. Like just, <laughs> Dear Santa, what the fuck? Why won't you visit me? I'm waiting here at this Christmas tree. Just... My teacher was like, look, you gotta stop saying fuck in your letters to Santa Claus, all right? You gotta, but you made that rhyme. That was really impressive. I can't believe you made that rhyme. So I missed out on a lot of uh, pop culture phenomenon that I think a lot of you saw and you watched uh, Goonies and Princess Bride, right? And Back to the, I never saw any of these movies. Back to the Future, I didn't see that. I never saw any Star Wars films. Oh, oh my God. And every time I say that, instead of feeling bad for me, people get mad at me <laughs> like it's a personal attack against them. Like, what? You didn't see Star Wars? Oh, you... Hey, get over here. This motherfucker <laughs> never saw Star Wars. Where, where have you been growing up, huh? Under a rock? In a galaxy far, far away, huh? Where the <laughs> fuck have you been living, Robin? And like, do you realize that you are yelling at me for having a shitty childhood? <laughs> Is that? It's like, it's like I, I wanted to watch the movies, but again, I, like I said earlier, we were very poor and my parents would lie to me about what we were and weren't allowed to do. There was a blockbuster video that was on the same block for where we lived and I always wanted to go there. I always saw commercials for blockbuster video. I guess $5 a movie was too expensive and they didn't want to tell me, so they just went, you can't get into blockbuster video unless you have a, a membership card. And I went, what do you mean? They're like, you have to have a membership card. I'm like, well, how do you get a membership card? They just go, well, it's for really important people and we're not important. You know, <laughs> so that's what they said to me. I go, well, what happens if you go into Blockbuster Video without a membership card? And they go, well, someone will shoot you. So don't <laughs> go in there. Fifteen years later, I'm 21 years old. I'm hanging out with my adult friends. I'm like, hey, where are we going, guys? We're going to Blockbuster Video. I'm like, oh, fuck. Do you guys have membership cards? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, I'm not, good. I'm not going in there without a fucking membership card. And when I went in there and they didn't shoot me, I'm like, oh, what next? Next you're going to tell me Santa's not real, huh? This is... Fucking bullshit. Oh, God, what a childhood. Um, I, I do, uh, I, there are some movies that I did watch, though, that I really love. There was a movie I love uh, called Memento. Have you guys seen the movie called Memento? Yeah, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen it, it's one of my favorite movies, and it's about this guy that has no short-term memory. So he has to write notes all over his body to remember what just happened a few minutes ago, right? But here's the sad thing. The reason I watch Memento is because I'm a Facebook addict, 
And I learned a long time ago that if you want to get a lot of Facebook likes, you say you like something popular, you'll get like 30 likes on Facebook, okay? Like, if I don't get 10 likes a day, then I'll kill myself. It's a really bad <laughs> what my addiction's gone, right? So I watch Memento, I'm about to post, I'm all excited, I go on Facebook, I log in, and all my newsfeed, my whole newsfeed is all like, USA, USA, we got them, America. And I realized that while I was watching Memento, apparently we had killed Osama bin Laden. And I'm the only person in America that went, oh man, that's really gonna take up my newsfeed. Like, <laughs> like, how long am I gonna have to wait before I can post about Memento? Like, this is <laughs> fucking bullshit. Couldn't have killed him tomorrow? <laughs> Obama's on TV like, SEAL Team 6 has killed Osama Bin Laden. I'm like, well, SEAL Team 6 also killed my ability to get optimal Facebook likes. <laughs> Sunday, four till 7 p.m., all right? Now I have to see a whole newsfeed of everyone saying hashtag never forget. Never forget. Well, you know who always forgot? It's the main character in Memento, all right? So hashtag always forget. Christopher Nolan directed that movie. He's one of my favorite directors. If you don't know, he made, he made Memento, he made The Dark Knight, he made Inception. But there's one flaw, though, in Christopher Nolan movies. You just pay attention when you're watching it, is that he makes very complicated plots, and then he has the main character explaining the plot back to whoever's watching it, like we're all dumb, okay? He does this in The Dark Knight, and it ruins the movie, okay? The Dark Knight is a perfect movie to the last five minutes, okay? Here's the last five minutes of The Dark Knight. Spoiler alert, it's a fucking 10-year-old movie, but whatever. <laughs> So here's what happens. Two faces dead on the floor, and Batman starts his monologue. Oh no, he's dead. And you know what they say, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. You know how we've been repeating that point the whole movie? That's the movie's theme. The motif of the movie, if you will. You either die here or you live long enough to see. Let me repeat it for the people watching at home. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. So, he's dead. So he's gonna be the hero or I'm alive and I live long enough to see myself become a villain. The subtext being that I'm so heroic that I'm self-sacrificing myself for Gotham City. My name is Batman, and you've been watching The Dark Knight. It's like, whoa, that's... It's really on the nose, Batman. I don't know if you can tell by the way I look, but I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. Thank you very much. Yeah. I want to tell you my favorite thing about professional wrestling, if you guys don't watch it, is that sometimes uh, they'll ask the fans what kind of match they want to see, but it's always like obvious what they want the fans to pick. So they'll be like, all right, fans, do you want to see these two in an arm wrestling contest? Do you want to see these two in a debate? Or do you want to see these two in a steel cage match? And everyone cheers for the cage match, but I'm like, man, I really want to see that debate. I want to watch <laughs> professional wrestlers debating the issues of the day. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. The Hulkster thinks that life begins at conception, dude. Like, whoa, Hogan, that's... You're going a little too far there. Embryo mania is running wild, brother. What you gonna do when pro-life runs wild on you, brother? Ooh, yeah, the macho man thinks that jet fuel can't melt steel beams. Yeah, ooh, yeah. Tower 7, ooh, yeah, snapping to the truth. <laughs> That's like for like 25% of you. It's a macho man is a 9-11 truther joke. It's a very specific set of people. <laughs> oh, that one's just for me, all right. Um, I have a girlfriend, which does surprise a lot of people. They're like, what, you have a girlfriend? You're like an adult that likes other adults? Holy shit, I can't wrap my brain around it, you know? Which means that I am a Vietnamese transgender lesbian, which means that I am a triple minority. So if any of you, any of you call me a bad name, you go, to, you go to jail for 50 years, so it's great, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I think that I'm the best Vietnamese transgender lesbian comedian in the country. I think, <laughs> I think a victory. Uh, 
A victory by default is still a victory. I don't know what you want from me. I don't... Really glad I have a girlfriend. I was really bad at being single. I like listened to my friends complain about like online dating. They'd be like, oh man, I wasn't okay Cupid. I went on like four dates, the girls were weird and dumb. And I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, slow down. You got messages back on okay Cupid? What are you bragging? You went on four dates? Let me tell you something. I was on okay Cupid for three years. And in three years, I got two messages. And they were both on May 13th. They were from the website itself, wishing me a happy birthday. So, <laughs> fuck you with your four dates. I'm also glad I have a girlfriend because I was single for like seven years, like really, like way too long, where I didn't hold hands with a woman, I didn't kiss a woman. So every day I became like a creepier person over time. You know what I mean? And then like, the porn that I watched got increasingly harder to defend. <laughs> you know, when you're just going down that rabbit hole, you're like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> and then I just found myself just talking out, out loud to my porn like a psychopath. <laughs> no one's around. I'm just like, yeah, fuck her, just like by myself. <laughs> and the creepiest thing I ever said out loud while watching porn was a, don't look at me, I'm not gonna help you. So I think... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a piece of shit sometimes. I don't know what you want from me. What? Trans people have to be heroes all the fucking time? Jesus. I'm a human being who is a piece of shit sometimes. When I was single, I jerked off to some pretty horrible things, okay? Nothing illegal, but just horrible things. I had to get rid of my old hard drive, like, years ago. Um, and, and it wasn't the porn that I was worried about. It was that I used to like, I used to masturbate to, to pictures of some of my female friends, you know? And by some of them, I mean like every single one of them that I've ever met in my <laughs> entire life. So I'd go on their Facebooks and I would like right click save as. Their, oh, I know, it, it gets worse. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, folks. We're gonna get through this together. <laughs> and then I would have to like, alphabetize their pictures for easier access, you know? It was like, it was like the GUI decimal system on my computer, you know, I know. So I got rid of this hard drive, because I was worried, like, what if I died and they find my hard drive? They have to round all these women up. They just found out I died and they're about to get wor worse news, you know? They're like, did you know that Robin had all your pictures saved in a hard drive called goodies? Did you guys, you guys know that? Oh, fuck, don't judge me. I never told them. <laughs> don't tell them. That's fucking creepy, all right? And I'm not a creep. In fact, I got off from not telling them. That was my favorite part, is that I would masturbate to the thought of them not knowing that I masturbated to them. But that's what got me off. I'd just be like, oh, yeah, you trust me, don't you? Oh, yeah. Just... Sorry, oh yeah, you trust me, that's more realistic. Oh yeah, I didn't mean to offend you all. Oh yeah, you trust me, don't you? Oh, I'm gonna have to write a blog about myself after this. I never thought I was gonna get laid. I, uh, I thought my dick was cursed or something, you know, like, a year before um, I lost my virginity, I got a citation for public urination. And then I found out that there was a chance I would have to register as a sex offender. And I'm like, what? I haven't even had sex yet. Like, this is bullshit. I'm gonna be the first virgin ever on Megan's Law. Like, this is, what the fuck? And then my friend tells me, you know, if you're a sex offender, you gotta go door to door and tell people. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? I don't know how to talk to people one on one. That's why I do stand-up comedy. I only know how to talk to people like one with a group. So if, if I was a sex offender, and I moved into a new neighbor neighborhood, I have to get like a mic and an amp <laughs> come in the middle of the neighborhood and be like, all right, new neighbors, come on out, new neighbors. <laughs> new neighbors, come on out. My name is Robin Tran, how are y'all feeling tonight, huh? Yeah, all right. By a round of applause, how many people here like misunderstandings, huh? <laughs> yeah, all right. I did lose my virginity though, at the ripe young age of 26 years old. To my, yeah, thank you. To my current girlfriend, actually. Lost my virginity to her. 
kind of happened by accident, actually. I'll tell you uh, the story of how I lost my virginity. Um, we, we had been seeing each other for a few months, and then one weekend, she uh, Facebook messaged me. She goes, hey, I live by myself, and uh, I would like for you to come over to my apartment this weekend so that we can write together Winky Face. And I was like, oh boy, I love writing. You know, I was so excited. I went to Target, I bought a backpack and <laughs> notebooks and pens and paper and pads. And I went up to her apartment that weekend with a, my new backpack, like, yeah. I, I look like that little fat kid from Up, you know, that little, yeah. We're gonna write together, this is gonna be the best. I get there and uh, Kate is uh, just sitting on the floor with her bathrobe showing her boobs sticking out, and she's completely stoned. I've never seen anyone, no shape to write whatsoever. And I'm, and I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh shit, she forgot to put clothes on for us all to write together. I got a, I got a new backpack and notebooks and stuff, you know? And then I, you know, I figured it out, of course, and she gave me some pot and I smoked it, and I'm like, oh man, like I'm starting to feel really horny now, you know? And, my plan was not to have sex with her, okay? My plan was to make out with her, dry hump her, and then come in my pants like a gentleman. All right, that's the, that's the nice thing to do. No cleanup. So I'm making out with her, and I just want to get some dirty talk going, and I go, I really want to fuck you. And to my surprise, she goes, okay. And I'm like, oh, shit. Whoa, I didn't know this was real. And she gets on all fours and she goes, fuck me doggy style. I'm like, dude, I haven't fucked anyone regular style yet. You want me to fuck you doggy? That's like a level 10. I'm not even at a level one yet. Like, you can't have animal style fries if you haven't had regular fries. You know what I mean? You can't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we did, we ended up having sex. It was, a, it was very nice sex. Very nice sex. It was very nice sex. It was very nice sex. It was, what, the, my, what am I fucking bore at? Jesus. And so like kind of the little joke that we do is I basically, I never left her apartment after that basically. It was uh, the little inside joke we have is that we knew we were lesbians even back then. You know, I just never moved out. <laughs> anyway, so um, for the next couple of years, things were going pretty well, but um, there was, you know, there was some weirdness in the relationship and we never really could really figure out what it was. And part of it is that I have bipolar disorder and I suffer from depression and I still do. And I always know when a depressive spell is coming, when the band Linkin Park goes from ugh to you guys just really get me. You know, when like <laughs> crawling in my skin, oh, I get it, Chester. I'm crawling in my skin. By the way, I don't like having depression. I hate it when comics, you know, comics, like, they'll get really, like, they'll glorify depression. And, like, I saw this uh, comic, and he posted, like, hey, comics, if you could take a pill that would make you happy forever, but if you took it, you wouldn't be funny anymore, would you take it? And, like, 50 comics, like, fuck no, I flushed that pill down the toilet, because I'm a comic. It's like, hey, look, being funny isn't that great, all right? Because... <laughs> Funny people kill themselves all the time. It's not really something to aspire to. So just take your happy pill and shut the fuck up with your tears of a clown speech. Every two weeks, a new co a comic is like, oh, comedians are depressed geniuses. It's like, most of us aren't even smart, okay? So anyway, sorry, I, I got sidetracked there. But so I was suffering depression in the relationship. And at the end of 2014, I, um, I, I was very close. I was, I was about to kill myself. So that's what happened. And uh, Kate got me some help. She called a therapist for me. And um, I started taking antidepressants. You know, I got happy. I got clean. I stopped smoking pot for a couple of days. <laughs> and <laughs> so in February, a couple of months after therapy and antidepressants, I was driving... Um, back to work, 
and uh, a very a, a girly song played on the radio. And I did what I've always done since I was a little kid. I roll it up the windows, I turn the volume down, and I would sing it quietly. But I think because of the antidepressants, I felt like, wait, why am I hiding that part of myself? That's so weird that I've been doing this for a long time. And then I, like, I just rolled down the windows, I turned it up, and I started singing it. And then the weirdest thing happened. Like my whole life flashed before my eyes, and I just remembered myself as a kid wearing pink and you know nail polish and stuff. And a very specific memory came back, and it was during the 1996 Summer Olympic Games. And there was a, a women's gymnastics team, and there was a gymnast named Dominic Mociano. And uh, I had the biggest crush on Dominic Mociano. I wanted to be with her. I wanted to be like her. It was very weird, you know. I never knew what that meant. So I would just dance around the neighborhood like Dominic. This is not how she did it. This is a horrible. <laughs> she did it. I would dance around like Dominic Mociano. <laughs> Whatever, you know. And and I did that because I was like, well, maybe if I meet Dominic Mociano one day, I'll show her I can dance like her, and we'll be together forever. And I would do it for the neighborhood, and all the neighbors thought it was adorable, but my dad was fucking furious. You know, my dad was like, don't do that because you're being gay. And I'm like, but I like a girl, so how can I be gay? My dad just goes, well, anyone who likes girly things is, is gay. I'm like, well, that doesn't even make any sense, but I'm a kid and you're dad, so that means that you're God, so God told me that being gay was bad, and so I just forgot about it. So all these memories came flooding back. Like, just 20 years of repressed memories, and I, I just, you know, pulled over the side of the road, and I just started crying for like half an hour. I've never cried this much before in my whole life. Not even after I fucked. Like, this, like this, this <laughs> end of the world, the world is so big. Just, oh my God, I can't believe it. And, um, and part of the reason I was crying was I realized, oh my God, I'm a woman who likes other women. My dad was right, I am gay. Just not in the way... <laughs> that he thought I was, like... He doesn't have a gay son, he's got a lesbian daughter. How is he gonna deal with, <laughs> deal with that shit? And then I realized I have to come out to my girlfriend, so I came out to my girlfriend like any good partner does. Uh, I, I Facebook messaged her. <laughs> and I was like, do you know born boy brain girl? No, I didn't, I didn't do that. That'd be really, I know born boy, what? <laughs> she was very supportive and she stuck with me. She's still with me today. And, um, and I will never forget that day. That was February 3rd, 2015. And that was the day that I went on Facebook and I told the whole world that I'm a transgender woman. And I got more Facebook likes than when I watched Memento. Like that was, <laughs> it was all worth it in the end. So many Facebook likes. I've been with my girlfriend for a few years now, and she's, uh, in case you didn't realize, she's white. And um, thing. I, don't, I don't know how else to say that. It's such a weird transition. Weird transition, oh my God, all right. I get a, I'll get into a whole thing about that. Um, so I wanna tell you some stories from back a few years ago, and I wanna tell you about the most stoned I ever got in my entire life while visiting her family in the East Coast for the holidays. Uh, it was a very white Christmas. Um, <laughs> It was like in Maine or Vermont. I don't know. I can't tell those white states apart. They all look the same to me. I don't know. They all look the same to me. Anyway, before I begin, I love marijuana. Anyone here love base? Pot is the greatest, right? Sometimes I'll smoke pot that's so good, I'll actually be like, whoa, I'm transgender. What are the fucking chances? Holy shit, like, there's so few of us out there. Oh my God, like. It's like Frodo with the ring. Like, there's like one me. I have all this power. <laughs> so anyway, this is a Christmas from a few years ago. Uh, someone hands me a joint and I smoke it. I instantly, I instantly get really high and I'm looking around. I see my girlfriend. I see her family. I see presents and I see there's prime rib in the oven. There's deer outside. Like, I'm like, man, Santa really liked the kids in this house, man. Like, this is <laughs> so nice. And I looked at my girlfriend and I... This is the marijuana, I just went, this is the happiest moment of my entire life. And then the weed started wearing off. And I realized that the reason why this was the happiest moment of my life was because for the first time in my life, I felt like a white person. And I was like, whoa, I've been missing out on all this my whole life? Like, being white feels awesome. Like, how do I, how do, I do this all the time? 
Anyway, I'm so high that I go upstairs and I pass out. The rest of Christmas is way downhill. I get woken up about half an hour later to the sound of her dad screaming the N-word at the top of his lungs downstairs. I know, worst alarm clock ever. Just, <laughs> what the fuck is happening downstairs? I come downstairs, her dad is at the dinner table and he's going, what, well how come they can say it and I can't say it? Huh, how come they can say it and I can't say it? And I'm like, what do you mean you can't say it? He said it so fucking loud, he woke me up upstairs <laughs> in the other room. Do you mean legally you can't say it? I don't think that's true either. If I called the police right now and I said, officer, this guy just said the N-word, they'd be like, well, so did we today. Have you been watching the news? We don't give a fuck. And hang up on me. But I'm trying to be polite. I'm a house guest. So I just sit there and I'm just gritting my teeth. Then he tries to get me involved, okay? So this is before my transition. And he, he looks at me, he just goes, you for instance, you're a, you're a Chinaman, right? <laughs> and then he tries to make it better, which makes it worse. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. You're a Chinaman American, right? <laughs> and you love it when I call you a Chinaman. Like, well, I wouldn't say I love it. In fact, I would like it if you please stop calling me a Chinaman American. <laughs> and he gets so mad, he gets up, he goes, oh, you kids are so politically correct nowadays. He leaves the table, and now, because I'm a house guest, I have to go, and I have to go apologize to this man for calling me a Chinaman. And it makes me so mad. I go upstairs, and I'm kicking things, and I'm like, God damn it. Why does my race always have to get brought up? This is... Bullshit, I gotta calm down, I gotta... So I take another hit of the marijuana, I just <laughs> gotta calm down. And I started feeling really happy again. And I was like, wait a minute, did I just have an argument about race over Christmas dinner? Holy shit, I am white, holy... <laughs> oh my God. When did that happen? There's another story about visiting the other side of her family, uh, white liberals and uh, in, a, in another white state. Sorry, I don't know which one. And um, again, this happened, this happened before my transition. So the first person I meet in that side of the family is her little, her little niece, Lisa. And uh, she, co she comes up to my girlfriend and me, and she'd never seen an Asian person before, I could tell. She just like, she looks at me, she looks at my girlfriend, and she just goes, why are you with this guy? And my girlfriend's like, well, because I, I love him. <laughs> and Lisa just goes, because you two don't look the same at all. <laughs> that's really racist if you uh, know what I'm talking, that's really fucking at all. We have eyes and lips, no, you're like a different species. I don't even know what you are. <laughs> so all weekend she's being really rude to me. She's asking me all these questions, like these leading rude questions like, hey, when Kate dumps you, I'm like, don't start a fucking question like that. That's the <laughs> Are you gonna be like, oh, boo-hoo, I got dumped, I'm a big garbage person, you know, and... and which actually made me laugh, because getting called a garbage person is pretty funny. So now, because I... She made me laugh, she's now, she kind of likes me. Now she's calling everything garbage. I'm like, good, she's fucking corrupt, fuck her, you know? So anyway... I, run, I, I meet her parents. Again, white liberals, very well-meaning. They take us to a sushi restaurant on Christmas, and they're just like, huh? And I'm like, well, not, not exactly, but pretty close. And they start doing this weird thing. It's a table full of white people, and, and we're sitting in a sushi, and then the uncle starts going like, hey, what kind of Asian is she? What kind of Asian is, is he? What kind of, like, I love, she, Jap I like Japanese people. Is she Korean? I like Korean culture a lot. Look, white liberals, I know you mean well, but sometimes you, you treat minorities like we're Pokemon Go characters. Like, it's just like... Hey, honey, I got this, I got this Asian Tranazar. Do you want to call it brave or should I? Like, just... Like, leave me alone. Fucking leave me alone, you know? But I'm like, look, I can't tell what Asian other Asians are. I just had to... And he goes, get the fuck out of here. So he tells the waitress, this Asian waitress to come by, like, hey, come, come over here. What kind of Asian do you think he is? And points over to me. And this Asian girl, who probably spit in our food five minutes later, looks over and she goes, I don't know, Filipino? 
And the whole table starts laughing. Because apparently in Vermont, being Filipino is a punchline. Just being Filipino. And then the little, and then Lisa tries to get in on the action and she stands up and she just goes, Filipinos are garbage. So. And if you could see the horrified look on those white people's faces, it was like Santa finally got me a gift. Oh my God, I was like, it was the most, I was the greatest Christmas ever. Dealt with racism my whole life, so like this, uh, the 2016 election really brought me down. And um, yeah, I don't even want to say his name, but you know, we got to say Trump, you know, Donald Trump when he won the presidency. I was so depressed about it that I, um, I actually called the suicide hotline. This is not, this is completely true. And I don't know if you guys know this, but ever since the election, they're having a really rough time over there too. Uh, suicide hotline. <laughs> like I call the suicide hotline and I'm like, this is Brian, how can I help you? That's not what he said, I don't know, I'm paraphrasing. This is not like, like tech help. How can I help you with your depression? <laughs> um, and, and then uh, I go, well, well, Brian, I'm, I'm really depressed about this election. And Brian goes, tell me about it. <laughs> I'm like, no, so something that really pisses me off is when I hear that um, Trump supporters, they voted for him because of economic anxiety. Have you guys heard that? Economic anxiety? The translation to that is, only white people are allowed to act shitty because they're poor. That's what that translates to for me. Economic anxiety, holy shit, have you heard my stories about Blockbuster and... Do you know how poor we were growing up? Let me tell you, even to this day, when I go to a grocery store, a, a, a supermarket called the Stater Brothers, I still get my favorite thing I've gotten since I was a little kid. It's called Stater Brothers Fruit Rings Cereal, okay? Thank you. Someone like a huge Fruit Rings fan here. It is $1.99 a box and it's fucking delicious, right? And one day I get there and they're all sold out. And then I see next to it, there's two canned Sam and Fruit Loops cereal. And I'm like, what am I, a fucking millionaire? You think I could afford Fruit Loops, $6 a box? Are you out of your fucking mind? I hate it when I'm at Stater Brothers and anyone has like brand name anything. When they have like Charmin toilet paper with the bear on it. I'm like, fuck you, Char I have to get like Stater Brothers construction toilet paper. Six rolls for a dollar that just rips my ass apart. You know how poor we were growing up? I would watch TV and they would make fun of poor people for eating Spam. But we couldn't afford Spam growing up. Spam is a brand name. I don't know if you guys knew that. We had to get the Stater Brothers version of Spam, which was just called Luncheon Meat. And the ingredients, is this a picture of a guy shrugging? He didn't even know <laughs> what it was. Spam is for the 1%, all right? <laughs> Do you know how poor we were growing up? Every day after dinner, my daddy would get mad at me if I pooped too soon after eating. So he made me hold in my poops an extra day so that the food would last longer. It turns out that's not how food works. <laughs> so just like me, my dad was full of shit, all right? So, <laughs> so I remember a, I, I went through this, um, this Christian phase a few years ago and uh, I went to an, uh, an all white church and um, it wasn't supposed to be all white, but it, it's America, you know? So it was like an all white church. <laughs> And I was the only Asian person in this church. Everyone at this church was white. Churchgoers were white, the minister was white, Jesus was white, everyone was white at this church. <laughs> and I was the only Asian person that any of these people had ever seen in their lives. So they gave me a nickname at this church. And my nickname was Ching Chong. That was my nickname. I know, not even Ching Chong American, just, <laughs> just Ching Chong. And I, I let them do this for three years. I would laugh along and 
my friends would ask me like, why would you let them call you Ching Chong like that? And, and here's my answer. I'm the only Asian person they've ever met in their lives. So I represent all Asian people to them, right? And so I was left with two really shitty options. Either one, I can laugh along and let them know that I'm a good sport, or I can correct them and reinforce the stereotype that Asians don't have a sense of humor. So uh, I had no fucking choice. This, I hated being the only Asian person in comedy clubs for years. Like some fucking comic would come out like, oh, First Amendment, yeah, freedom, yeah. Don't you guys hate it when Asians are all like, King Chong, King Chong, King. And I have to, and everyone turns to look at me for permission. And I'm just like, ha ha ha. I don't think it's funny, but I'm gonna laugh just to show you guys that I'm a good sport, even though this is killing me inside. <laughs> oh my God. Say aw. Don't, don't you dare say aw. Dealt with racism my whole life. I remember even before my transition, when I would go on stage, people would yell Gangnam Style at me, everyone. Just, they would yell Gangnam Style at me. I'd be like, what the fuck, Gangnam Style? Like, I was born in America, and I graduated with an English degree. And I've never said that without a white person going, don't you mean English? Like, what the fuck? Like, you're a liberal, why would you say that to me? I go to monster truck rallies and I watch professional wrestling. I'm not even whitewashed. I'm like white trash, all right? And you guys still won't respect me as an American, all right? It's really weird though that I'm too Asian for my white friends, but I was always too whitewashed for my Asian friends. My Asian friends were the only group that were unimpressed that I did stand-up comedy. Like my Asian friends would be like, yeah, you following your dreams? Is that what you're doing, huh? Like, why are you getting so fucking aggressive? Like, following your dreams, huh? Is that what you're doing? Like, yes, I am following my dreams. They're like, yeah? How much are you getting paid? I'm like, well, not very much. And they're like, oh, well, why do you do it then? Because you love it? They sounded like robots experiencing emotion for the first time, like, Explain to me this concept of love and not money. I don't understand. <laughs> and I downplayed how little I actually made doing comedy. I actually lost money doing comedy for a long time. I remember a few years ago, I drove two hours to get to this unpaid gig. And when I got there, I performed for three angry senior citizens <laughs> who did not know there was gonna be comedy. They just like, <laughs> If you don't know about comedy shows, sometimes you get to a venue, no one told the audience there was gonna be comedy. There was this piano bar, these three old people were just eating, they shut off the piano and they're like, well, here comes your, your entertainment and I'm just coming out talking about my dick, like, <laughs> something's never changed. They hated me so much. And then I was so depressed, but then after the show in the parking lot, I step into some shit sludge. And then I had to throw my shoes away and I had to drive home barefoot. Do you know how much money I made that night? I made negative shoes dollars. That's how much money I made doing stand-up comedy. And I've come a long way from that to this tonight. This has uh, been one of the greatest experiences. One of the greatest experiences of my life. And, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like, I feel like my life is changing way too quickly, okay? Because um, I, like, I used to hate the way I looked so much that I wanted to kill myself, right? And that's way too far. But now I've gone too far the other way with like self-love and all that stuff. And uh, look, I don't know how else to say this, okay? But sometimes I look at pictures of myself and I get an erection, okay? <laughs> I know that's weird. <laughs> it's not something I'm used to. I'm looking at pictures of myself, I'm getting boners. I'm like, what the fuck, that's weird. <laughs> and then one night I got really, really stoned and you know what happens when I get high and I'm just like, what if I just jerked off to a picture of myself? You know, like what if I, <laughs> what if I did that, right? <laughs> and then I did, yeah. I was all like, oh yeah, you trust me, don't you? Oh yeah. I was. Just, <laughs> 
And then right when I came, I was like, oh no, I'm a serial killer. What, what, the, what the fuck was I thinking? And there's my pictures looking back at me like, don't look at me, I'm not gonna help you. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I go talk to my therapist, of course. And I'm crying, I'm like, oh my God, I, I jerked off to a picture of myself. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And this is how I knew I loved my therapist. My therapist looks at me, she just goes, it just sounds like you like to have a good time. So I, my name is Robin Tran, everyone. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.